1999's End of Days, perhaps the most love-filled romance of the century. For the lovelorn, this may be the perfect New Year's Eve pick. End of Days sees Arnold Schwarzenegger, a former detective now running a booming security company. Unfortunately, this former devout detective has hit a real dead end in his faith, due to a a really small family issue. Also, his diet is horrendous. Robin Tunney, a young, lovelorn psychosis sufferer, grows tired of the lonely nights in her Park Avenue mansion, comforted only by a violent, broom-haired nanny. After a simple misunderstanding involving the clergy, Ignatius, Arnold's character, is called in to clear everything up. At first, Fizuzu, Tony, finds Ignatius cocky and abrasive, but after finding his heart of gold, she seeks to mine it in sickness and in health. Iggy is also smitten. Little does Pazuzu know that the literal man of her dreams may be right around the corner. Gabriel Byrne, playing the edgy, brooding, or dark, anointed cherub that covers, has been looking for a girl like her for, well, centuries even. She's been looking for love. Will this religious nutjob save Arnold lost in the deep, dark fog of atheism? Or will she find the conclusion of a centuries-old tale of longing, love, and ritualistic sex? Ten stars. Nineteen eighty-eight's Die Hard, a touching tale told at Yule time, a tale as old as time. A man, Bruce Willis, is a cop who back east is busting heads and feeling lonesome. His wife and kids are in California, lobbying for the reintegration of child labor. Holly McLean, Die Hard's wife, decides to throw a Christmas party in order to celebrate a recent age reduction in industrial labor laws and a merger with the Japanese tech giant, Wayland Yatani. Only by mistake does Die Hard even receive an invitation. Immediately, he sees it as a chance to reconcile emotionally and, more importantly, physically with his wife and kids. Meanwhile, Hans Gruber, Alan Rickman, a Grinchy character who runs a hedge fund hell-bent on acquiring Nakatomi. He knows about some shady compositions in Wayland Yatani products. Asbestos in a CSI toy, and a doll composed entirely of guano. Bat feces. If Wayland Yatani doesn't sell, he'll spill the beans. On Christmas Eve's Eve... Hans is visited by three spirits who remind him Christmas isn't about hostile acquisitions or research and development, but really about his buying as much as possible because objects are God and giving someone objects proves that you love them. Can the three find the love within? The Spirit of Christmas? Will Die Hard and Holly find the love hidden between the hate? Will Hans to be able to bring that Chinese guy back to life? Two half stars. 2006's The Departed. In this sentimental tugger of heartstrings, we see Leonardo DiCaprio play Will Hunting, a South Boston tough who solves this crazy math problem containing many symbols. He decides to use his brain for some very zealous community outreach. Matt Damon is a communal South Boston police officer named Doug McRae, a former hockey star who is rising through the constabulary ranks and finds the woman of his dreams, Vera Farmiga psychiatrist Elizabeth Proctor, a studied young state psychiatrist who with the wonderkind McRae 
begins to build their dreams. A nightmare. Due to his, let's say, in-your-face attitude, Mr. Hunter begins to visit a certain state psychiatrist and immediately finds hope in Ms. Proctor. The ever-faithful doctor resists, but only so long as a woman could a violent drug addict. Meanwhile, her father, Frank Costello, Jack Nicholson, an aged world-renowned author and professor who in old age has found himself trapped in cough syrup steely grasp. Anyway, this author is planning to release a tell-all about how Will Hunting is a fraud, who faked solving that math problem all along. One problem with this equation, it's all a sham. He made it up to discredit Will because of his strong belief Elizabeth will be happier with Doug, Doug McRae. But of course the choice will be Elizabeth's. Will she find herself? in her dreams, or will she pick what she thinks is the dream, but turns out to be the nightmare? Two stars. Nineteen eighty nine's The Killer is a foreign tour de force of heartfelt emotion and original music. A truly classical story of an assassin, a blind singer, a shoot first copper, and a slightly effeminate old man. Ah Zheng, Chao Yun Fet, the titular killer, opens performing a job at a bar. He kills almost everyone, from the target all the way to the bartender. But unfortunately, the bar singer gets shot in the eyes or something, and is now going blind. Naturally, Ah Zheng begins stalking her, and quickly engages in a relationship with this beautiful woman who he has essentially blinded. Coincidentally, a police detective, Szechuan Chopsticks, links his mafia case to the killer. The killer is tasked with his final assignment, shoot a Chinese man from the back of a boat. The reward, just enough to quit the killing people game and get some new eyes from America for his blinding love. Unfortunately, the mafia is cheap, and doesn't want to pay Ah Zheng for his murderous work. After discovering Ah Zheng's whereabouts, Szechuan instinctively becomes his best friend. Then the two set loose on a million-mile-per-hour rocket ride. To end Hong Kong gang violence by any means, find eyes for that one lady, and get paid! Do the pair have what it takes to outlast, like, 50 guys in a small room with many guns? Who's to say? About a 7 or an 8 karate chops. 1974's Chinatown, the tear-filled true story of how one brave private detective reunites one mother with her long-lost daughter and her long-lost sister. In the face of unfettered power and water use, P.I. J.J. Giddis, Jack Nicholson, grows tired of hawk-shawing cheating wives and husbands. He longs for the days of old, in the P.D. helping Asians with laundry, when, all of a sudden, in walks Evelyn Mulray, a, um, beautiful and beautifully rich debutante, or so it seems. He takes the case and succeeds, and into his office walks a slightly more, um, beautiful woman. Who is this? says J.J., and she replies, Evelyn Mulray, and I sent my sister in to, um, test you. Also, she was nervous, so she lays it on the line, don't waste my time. It turns out her rich and powerful father had hidden her sister and daughter away in a castle deep. For he believed if the three united, they could form Voltron, an ancient and deadly robot deity. So he cases the take and sets out to peel back this onion with every layer stinkier than the next. 
Firstly, she didn't know where the castle was. So JJ checks Quebec and Burkina Faso, but to no avail. Later, he checks a phone book, and Eureka, the address. But can he trust Evelyn or her devious father? Was it a bad choice to set the movie in 2064 Omaha? X to the X Power Stars. 1999's Eyes Wide Shut is absolutely spilling over the brim with love and pageantry. The first and only film released by visual artist Water Commissioner Yell Burton, a strict adaptation of the works of Henry Darger, Dr. Bill Hartford, Tom Cruise, a man longing to feel love, when his actual then-wife, who also plays his wife, Laura Prepon, who also plays Alice Wonderland, who admits to feeling love for another man. Bill Hartford is sent into a mad rage, stalking the city for the feeling of love. After meeting a former acquaintance, Hartford is spellbound by what he learns. His friend will play his pianist at a party where everybody wears kooky masks and robes. He follows his friend after his vances are rebuffed. Immediately he finds the kooky masks and robes kind of fun and a bonus perk. Everyone at this packed party was feeling love. All around him, he saw men feeling love for women, many men feeling love for one woman, and even four women really feeling love right next to him. But alas, while he wanted to feel love with everyone, the one person who he wanted to feel love for wasn't there, Alice Wonderland. So after a tear-filled, awkward exchange laid an escape, he went home. He and his wife cry, eat ice cream, and watch The Dead Zone. But still, will the two become one once more? Ninety-nine stars. <laughs>